I'm Kyle Fansler from World Soccer Talk, and this episode of the World Soccer Talk podcast is presented by Sling. Using Sling, you can watch the conclusion to the Premier League and League 1, as well as the upcoming Women's World Cup this summer. Again, you can watch all of that on Sling. American fans of the Bundesliga will be familiar with Archie Rin Tut, who is a sideline reporter and an analyst on ESPN's coverage of the Bundesliga. So today, I have the privilege of talking to Archie about his career and what makes the Bundesliga so special. So, Archie, I'm going to start with that question right there. You're obviously very involved with the Bundesliga. You're there on the ground. What makes the Bundesliga so special, and why is that your focus? Is it something that you were just there to start with, and that's kind of where your career developed, or was that really always a passion for you to end up in the German top flight? Hey, so it was an accident, a, a happy accident, I would say. I was somebody who was very much a child of the Premier League and grew up in England, never had any German relations or roots at all, and... I think the the fortune I had was coming to Germany on a school trip once upon a time. And just whilst I was meant to be listening to the historical features of Nuremberg, I instead saw people floating towards the stadium there, <laughs> the Max Morlock Stadion. And I was like 15 at the time and thought, as, as much as I respect history, this looks much more interesting to me <laughs> right now. And I would rather be heading towards this stadium. Uh, and it, it, it ended 1-1 between Nuremberg and Hansa Rostock that day in, in February 2008. Not, not that we got to go see the game, but something, I don't know, clicked in my head of, oh, so there's football in other countries too, huh? Like, <laughs> um, sure, of course, I knew that. But being able to just kind of see the, I don't know, tradition of it kind of started to get me hooked and uh, then I had more free time than I'd ever had before at university and and suddenly you're starting to watch Mainz against Freiburg on a Friday night and instead of going out and then the next thing you know you're like "Hmm, okay I I guess I'm quite into this now so um, what makes the Bundesliga special for me is the I'd say uh, the classic reasons of the relationship between the fans and their clubs, how the fans are the clubs. And also, I'd say just when when you grow up with a kind of football which is so diametrically opposed to the Bundesliga, it, it makes it even more interesting to find out that it works differently, but why does it work differently? Mm. And just seeing that whole, all those comparisons and, and the contrasts between the two footballing landscapes in the two countries has been a joy to dive into and remains that as well because when I when I first started even working on it in a professional basis I thought I knew a lot and every year since then has been a gentle reminder sometimes not so gentle that uh, I don't um, (laughs) and that it keeps me curious and that's the best thing. So everyone's got that professional focus, and then for you, that professional focus kind of aligns with your personal focus, which is the Bundesliga. But having grown up following the Premier League, like you say, do you ever try to, or I'm sure you do still follow it to a, a certain extent, especially when there's all these European interlinks between uh, between leagues. But I'm curious, do you still watch the Premier League? Maybe have a, a favorite club there that you uh, you just follow passionately? I mean, I, I am a Fulham supporter, so <laughs> whenever... Fulham are in the Premier League. I naturally watch more Premier League, but it's difficult for me to watch it live at a weekend because I'm usually on the road on a Saturday or a Sunday. And when I'm done with watching uh, the required amount of Bundesliga that I need to for work, mm-hmm. uh, then yeah, I, I I I will follow. I follow what what's happening a lot. I watch highlights. Mm and whatnot, but I, I don't follow it anywhere near the same way that I would have, say, when I was at uni or at school even and and growing up with it. And yeah, when when Fulham fell out of the division in uh, in 2014, that also led to a, a drop off of my interest because primarily I, I follow Fulham and that's 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 where um, 
that's that's where my interest comes from in in the Premier League as as much as anything. So yeah. Well, I'm sure a lot of American fans will be happy to know that you're a Fulham fan because what Brian McBride, Clint Dempsey, and what more recently Tim Ream and Anthony Robinson still, have all been involved. Still, I don't know if you can see that, but he's still my background. <laughs> um, so, still proud of that. An American icon and a Fulham icon to a certain extent, I'm sure. Uh, Big time. Well, Archie, about your work in the Bundesliga, something that always stands out for me when I watch the Bundesliga and you're, you're covering it, is that you're much more relaxed than a lot of other analysts or pitch that reporters might be. They're very, they're very factual, but you're someone that maybe might bring in that more entertainment side, you know, kind of make things more casual. I'm curious, A, I have two questions on this. The first one is, why do you do that? Is it to make it more casual, more enjoyable for viewers? I, I, I Partly, I think it, it's who I am as well, and it's sticking to the way that, I am with probably just jazzed up a little bit more because that's what happens in, in television. Um, yeah, I think it can show the more extreme sides of your personality, but also I just think football should be fun. Um, and that's, that's also what I want to keep with whenever I'm, I'm, I'm on air and, and doing something because I think, a lot of the time I I see football being presented as this very serious thing. And I'm like, look, obviously it, it, it has its significance, but ultimately I think that it's there's there's nothing better than having a having a, a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon and, and being able to to watch a game. And I think that that's also probably the attitude of most fans watching at home i think if there are distinctions to be made between a, a fan watching at home who i think will watch a game probably more casually on the whole mm -hmm. and a fan in the stadium and yeah my job is to is to try and talk to those people and uh i've also just been fortunate that i've worked with people who have allowed me that freedom of expression and have not put me in a corset and said you need to be doing it like this so yeah, I just wanted to do things a bit differently um, and have been allowed to find my own way. So, yeah. And also working on the European football show on BT Sport in the UK, I, I, that, that was a big influence for me and in seeing particularly how smooth an operator somebody like James Richardson was um, and, and is uh, and working with him at close hand and just seeing how if he maybe fluffed a line at some point that he was trying to say how smoothly he'd be able to to work around that and that was one of the things that really put an impression on me as well just seeing that he has this ability to maneuver his way out of situations where I think that the straighter that you play things then the the greater the height that you're you're setting yourself up to fall from. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you are more relaxed, that, then yeah, it's it's an easier it's an easier pickup from there, shall we say? So yeah, and there are so many things in life that I think are serious. Mm -hmm. I don't think football should be one of them all the time. Right. <laughs> so right. yeah. Orchard, do you think you could? And I don't want to. I don't like much dealing with hypothetical situations, but. When you talk about the Premier League, would you say it's such a, a, a different kind of environment to the Bundesliga? Say you were covering the Premier League, and for obviously in the United States, that belongs to NBC. They're much more, you know, straightforward, as you say, much more factual. Do you think you could use this, you know, easygoing persona that you use in your Bundesliga coverage in the Premier League as effectively? I, I think so, but I think it's a completely... It, it would be a different thing for me were I ever to do that because the part of it for me is is having that natural curiosity about Germany and the Bundesliga and I see it as kind of my job to you know walk through the cultural aspects as well um along with um our lead commentator uh, Derek Ray as well that I think we both see that as something which is important so I think it would just be very different. It would be, be very different. Of course, like 
I would retain elements in this hypothetical environment uh, of, of the way I do things. But I think that there is no one size fits all approach. I think you, you, you have a core idea, but you also are trying to fit whatever that approach, whatever that coverage demands. So yeah, I, I think that it, it would just probably be a bit different. Yeah. Well, Archie, you, met, you mentioned uh, Derek Ray, who I've, I've talked to a couple of times. I, I love talking to him every time I get to do that. He's told me all his stories about the people he's talked to, the games he's covered. And I want to ask that question to you because you've been doing this for some time now. And I want to ask who are the the best, or, hmm, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it, The your most enjoyable coaches or players or anybody in the game that you've had the opportunity to get to know and uh, maybe just interview? So many. Uh, I've been fortunate in that I've not really had... I, I can barely remember any real negative experiences that I've had of of interviewing people. And I, I think it's 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 funny because there's just there's just amazing moments that I've been able to witness in in stadiums where I've not interviewed actually after a game, but I've still been working there. Like I mean, it's a year to the day since Eintracht Frankfurt won the Europa League. And that for me was one of the most incredible things to to witness not just the game in uh, in Sevilla but but that their whole run with uh you know going to Barcelona and taking 30,000 fans with them so there's you know the the interviews in the build up to those days were were cool and you know the relationship uh that I've developed um with 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 coaches and how you see them start to open up to you a bit more the more that you get to talk to them as well is is something that i've also enjoyed uh it's it, it's been a lot of fun working with edin terzic this season the Borussia Dortmund coach and before he left Bayern as well julian nagelsmann i always found um somebody who was very agreeable and willing to answer a lot and give a lot of insight into to his work so yeah there are why well, there are so many to choose from that i struggle just at this one moment um to you know players who are also real characters uh, this season Geraldo becker of union berlin uh i found incredibly relaxed even though he just lost 2-1 against borussia dortmund and talking about his fruit eating habits which <laughs> i found i found a lot of fun as well so yeah um there's there's so many to choose from that i struggle to narrow it down to a couple as i think you can tell <laughs> those relationships with with coaches for example your your julian nagelsman your 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 Borussia Dortmund head coaches how do you develop that relationship is it something where you had the opportunity to just you know talk to them once and then had a good conversation with them then, and then the next one's even better and even better. Do you ever find that's a struggle, or is it something that just comes naturally to you, maybe with specifically coaches in the Bundesliga? I try and pick up on the signals, on the little cues, on noticing the kind of alleyways that they don't mind going down, noticing when they shut off certain topics, because... Most of the time, I've only got three or four questions max. Mm -hmm. And in that time, so sometimes you don't have enough things to talk about that you need to milk out a few points. Sometimes you have so many things that you want to ask that you have to just be brutal and say, okay, I'm going to ask this and this. Um, so I think you're, you're always keeping, I, I'm I'm always keeping that at the the forefront of my mind of, of being, um, you know, editorially as um as as correct as possible when it when it comes to that i think that yeah you know developing a relationship with anybody is the same you need to you need to listen um and i have the advantage that i that i get to listen back in my own time and and, and watch it back and and maybe think what is it that i haven't asked there and i see it over a season that I, I treat um, the the interviews with the managers because I get a lot of chances to do that. I want to try and paint a bigger as big a picture as possible 
over the season and that's done with small strokes through the season and and trying to touch on different areas and not always coming back to the same question and i think when 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 your approach is wanting to know stuff that you don't know then largely it's um it's easier i don't think i'm i try not to just search for a headline um every time i think sometimes there's a crossover where naturally the question that you are asking will be that as mm-hmm. well but i want to yeah just try and find out more and put myself in their shoes so yeah i i don't frame it in terms of uh d- developing a, a relationship but at the same time i do see it as being a, a long term project that 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 you're working and it is not sometimes worth going for that particularly when you're working with one or two clubs pretty much every week it is sometimes worth holding back on um say being a bit more clinical and ruthless in your questioning than if you are working with somebody who uh, where you're going to see them maybe once a season and like there's there's a, a lower risk there so yeah i think diplomacy helps and also being in germany where the the natural tone of questions can be a bit harsher the fact that i come from an english environment where we tread a little bit lighter also helps first you want to ask about being in germany because for so many american broadcasters of the sport they they call games from studios in the united states so they might not get that full picture of the the stadium but since you were there you allow us to kind of feel that emotion in stadiums and i want to ask you how important do you think it is not just in the bundesliga but for for the sport everywhere how important is it to have that that person or that even that group maybe that is able to show the environment, show the emotion of the game? And that's so important in the Bundesliga, I feel like, because the fans are so involved. But for you, you're there. How important is that role for American audiences watching soccer? I think it's 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 huge because you're you're showing people what what they can't see on the camera one feed that they're getting and it it is those little details about spotting things that are not shown on the feed that i think can help really maximize the experience of of, of anybody watching and and also yeah it it it, it, it is certainly some self justification from my point of view but <laughs> i i do think you want to encourage people to to go live it at some point as well uh i i guess i'm i'm almost part of a um i'm 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 almost part of the tourism industry in that sense <laughs> um but no it's it's i think it's important because you you want to tell stories and and the stories are often you're you're always getting a director's cut of how the game looks and i will have a different one just with my own eyes mm-hmm. and i think that you just want to have different details and uh you know budget allowing allowing for that which i think is the big thing that everybody in tv is uh, is fighting for right. and um, and and uh, and fighting uh, to preserve then then yeah for sure um when it's possible and 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 when it's justified um and i just feel very fortunate that i'm sent to as many games as as i am with with espn um and that they are as supportive in in that regard because yeah um as as the bags under my eyes tell you about my weekend travels <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of travel and i love yeah, it right um and yeah uh you know getting to see these different places and and go to these different places it, it opens it up so yeah i think it's uh, look on a personal level i love it but i would also say that it just gives you that extra feel of you're there and i think that that's that what that's what live sport is about mm-hmm. now archie I'll, I'll wrap up with this for someone that may not follow the bundesliga actively but they'll you know they'll watch it if it's if it's on you know that's a pretty casual or casual thing here in the united states 
What would you say is the biggest draw for the Bundesliga? And that doesn't have to be specifically this season when you have, you know, a, a title battle, which is something that you don't see every year in Germany. It doesn't have to be, you know, a story like Union Berlin. But just overall, what what is the biggest draw for you to uh, to German soccer? The attitude of the supporters that they are the clubs and it is not about the owners. It is about the way that this community is at the heart of, of the football and that despite whatever the result may be, no one is walking away from the stadium always thinking, oh, I mean, my team sucks, this and that. Like They may think that, but, but at the heart of that, there is this deeper connection with their club and that that is the thing that matters most is that they keep that in their hands and that they contribute towards that. And no matter how many times Bayern Munich win the title, that they will still have that for themselves. And and it, it makes the days when they do have success that little bit sweeter. I saw that with Eintracht Frankfurt uh, in, in person. Mm -hmm. And just, I think, being able to, to feel that, sure, is you know you you feel part of a family and when supporting a team i think in in in, in all kinds of ways but i think i've not seen anything this visceral when i was in england uh than than when i was in germany and yeah i think that uh it's when you look at the the sorts of people and stories that you see of the those owning teams in in the Premier League, uh, it shows that there's another way, and that they have managed to remain pretty competitive still, mm -hmm. despite despite their um, despite their limitations. So, right. yeah, different stories, and just yeah, a, a different well and and a different way of seeing things. So, yeah, right, come well. join. Yeah, well, Archie, I, I, we always look forward to watching you and, and the Bundesliga. I know the season's coming to a close here soon, but uh, like I said, always a pleasure to watch you and uh, really want to thank you for uh, coming on and talking to us. Carl, no problem. Thanks, Thanks at all. Too.